Hi, everybody. My name is Hugo Bernier, and today I'm going to be talking to you about building SharePoint Framework solutions using Azure Communication Services integration. And we'll talk about what that is uh, very shortly. But the sample that I'm going to be showing you today is actually was actually built by Joao Mendez. And, you know, it's it's a like everything that Joao does. It's a, it's a very cool sample that is very comprehensive in terms of how it was built and everything. And the one thing that I want to make clear is that, you know, sometimes in our SPFX sample, uh, we have some samples that are very simple because they illustrate a concept. And we have some samples that are, you know, I, I would say academically perfect. They're, they have pretty much everything included in this sample. And this is definitely one of them. Don't let that scare you. The sample is a great way to understand some of the advanced concepts. It is, again, it helps you understand also how to structure your solution and things like that. And we wanna make sure that you're not always stuck with only advanced samples. We wanna, we wanna make sure that sometimes you have samples that are just to show you a concept because everyone has to start at level 100 at some point. But once you're ready to look at more advanced samples, this is definitely going to be one of them. All right, so let's talk about Azure Communication Services. What is Azure Communication Services? It's basically an Azure service that you can use to do some really cool stuff, including things like voice and video calling, uh, rich text chat, SMS, and email. And I'm not a smart person, so when I think about Azure Communication Services, I kind of think about Teams as a service, right? So imagine if you could actually take all the functionality in Teams and put it as a service in Azure, and that's really what it is. Um, now, a much smarter person might actually think of it as communication platform as a service. That's really what the official term for Azure Communication Services is. Now, if I go to Azure and I go create an Azure Communication Services, all I need to do here is I go to Azure, I click on create a resource, and then I'll search for communication services, if I can type properly. There you go. And I'll just click on create. Now, once I create this, I'll have to pick my subscription. Uh, again, I like to use my, my uh, MSDN subscription and I'll create a resource here. Now, I already created a resource before this, so it's going to scream at me, but I'll just pretend that I'm creating a new one. All right, and once that's created, I'll get something like this that will say, here's your Azure subscription, here's your, your resource. And you'll see that right away, it allows me to do things like building some chat and telephony and voice and video services. But the, the magical thing here that we are looking for is, right here, the keys. If we look at the keys, we have connection strings that we can use. And the connection strings are going to be pretty much the, the thing that we're going to need uh, to integrate into our applications to be able to connect to this communication services from our own applications. The other thing that you should uh, probably take a look at is that there is a quick start section in the Azure Communication Services. And there's lots of cool samples you can use, uh, but one of the ones we're going to look at in particular today is the get started with the group calling hero sample. And so let's do some demo. When you go to the Azure Communication Services kind of sandbox, um, you'll actually get access to these components here. And the cool thing about this is that if you think about the complexity of building a chat functionality or video, you know, video functionality uh, or anything like that, that Teams provides you, you'd have to create a lot of components and connect them together and everything. So the Azure Communication Services folks have actually created uh, composite controls uh, and UI controls that you can use to actually build your samples. Uh, so you've got a whole bunch of different use cases that we can use here. And there's, you'll see that there's two types of libraries. There's composite controls, like I said, which are combined components together. And those are designed to make it easy for you to integrate with Fluent UI design, to actually have your kind of layout control in a, in a very um, consistent way. 
and you can inject some data model. But if you want to go even further, you want to inject your own CSS or your own experience and things like that, you can use the individual UI components, the individual Lego blocks, if you will, and put them together. So for example, here we have a call composite component that allows you to, um, to actually call the functionality and it'll pretty much create the experience for you. And if you see, all you need to do is you import you know, an adapter, you import the composite, and then in your code, you'll actually call this component here and say, this is what I want. I want this adapter. I want you know these options and so on and so forth. Now, I've actually built that for you. And here's an, a chat composite. If I just wanted to do chat functionality, well, let me show you the call composite. So here, I have the call composite. It's running as a website in Azure, and I'll actually join this meeting. See if this is like uh, inception, meeting inception. So this is this meeting. We should be able to see if the demo gods are with me. Let me just make sure that I pick the right camera here. Uh, yes, my NVIDIA broadcast. Turn it on. And hello. And what I'll do here, I should be able to see this exact presentation. Now I'm going to mute, mute myself here. Actually, I don't need to mute myself. You can see that I'm in the demo. And this is going to start going crazy here. All right, so let me get out of this, this demo. And let me actually show you the web part that our friend Joao built using one of those composite components. All right, so we have here a, this is a screenshot from uh, from Joao's sample. He's got two versions of the same, uh, the same web part in two different pages. So he can demonstrate here uh, acting as two individuals, uh, one who's Fox and one who's Mouse. And you'll see that Joao added the ability to pick your own avatar, uh, the ability to have kind of this room chat pane, and then to be able to do things like who's in the chat, leave the chat, hide the participants, and do things like that. It's a very cool feature here. And if I just kind of mouse over here, again, we have leave chat, we have the participants, the list of participants, and we have even things like the typing indicator and things like that. A lot of this is actually provided by the composite controls. What's unique here is that Joao put it together in a SharePoint framework solution. Let's go quickly through what the code does. All right. So first of all, like every other sample that Joao builds, you know the structure is always awesome. It's very easy to understand. So you'll see here that Joao has broken the sections into assets and components and constants and things like that. But the thing that we're going to pay attention to today is the web part itself, the room chat web part. And let's go into this. In the render function of the web part, you'll see that all that Joao does here is he calls the room chat component, but he also passes the parameters or the attributes that we want, the props, I guess, is the term I should be using. And he'll pass two things in particular, the topic that he wants to show and the connection string, which we saw earlier in my settings in Azure Communication Services. And then the where we get the ACS connection string and the topic is in the property pane configuration. So that thing that pops up when you add a web part where we can now specify the topic we wanna to show and the connection string. Now, what Joao does is he actually passes those attributes to the chat component. So in my components area, I have a room chat component. And the room chat component, really what it's got is something that calls a room chat control. Now there's a whole bunch of other things about the global state provider and things like that, that just makes it easy for it to store the information about the web part globally, but we'll skip that because we're limited on time. But inside of that, I've got my room chat control. And you'll see that the room chat control is broken down into smaller controls as well. So I've got my errors, I've got my ability to join, I've got my configuration, I've got my panel. We'll focus on the panel because that's the part that you saw in the demo today. 
But the panel is really, again, included in a chat panel control. And I'll spare you from having to go into that because the chat panel control calls the chat control. And the chat control has the same components we saw earlier, where it's got the chat adapter and the chat composite and the avatar persona data, which is exactly what you saw when I was showing you the composite controls from the Azure Communication Services team. What he's doing is he's actually embedding the chat composite component and he's passing the Fluent theme from the web part and the adapter that will connect to Azure Communication Services. The adapter is actually created uh, earlier using uh, React hooks. And so what we do here is we do a create adapter and we pass things like the display name, the user ID, the credentials, and the thread ID. And then in the hook section, this is kind of brilliant, what, uh, what uh, Joao does is he's got a use ACS API hook that he can use, making it easier for him to embed ACS APIs within his application. So he's got the context here that he passes with the connection string and all that stuff. He's got the person's email address that we extract from the context, as well as their display name so that we can understand who's chatting. And then we call the communication identity client from the Azure Communication Services APIs to authenticate and do all that stuff. And guess what? We get to pass that connection string that we used earlier in our configuration. So that's really how Joao does all this information. He's actually doing something beautiful by using a lot of components that were pre-built and then really wrapping it into SharePoint framework. Now, there's different ways to approach this. You know, in this case, Joao is actually using a connection string that is passed into a property pane. But what if you didn't want your users to have to know the connection string? There's something that you could use in your web parts, which is called online or SharePoint online tenant properties. And the tenant properties are things that you can use for your entire tenant and store them so that all the web parts and all the extensions can actually consume those properties. So for example, here I can use REST or I can use the online uh, management shell, PowerShell, or the CLI for Microsoft 365 to set those properties. And then in my web part, I can retrieve those properties. So instead of copying the connection string in every web part or asking every user when they drop the web part to, to connect, copy and paste the connection string, I could set that globally. So think of that in ways of if, when you have stuff that, again, you don't want to share widely. Now, the one thing I want to make clear is these properties are actually, you know, they're going to be read by the web part. So this is not hiding the connection string or anything like that. If you wanted to hide it, you'd want to use something like Azure Key Vault or something like that. But you know, this is a great way to centrally store things. And all you need to do within your code is to call the get storage entity and pass a key. And then you'll get a response that will have the information. So if I wanted to do this in my code, I would probably do something like this. I'll say get storage entity and I would pass a key called Azure connection string. I would have previously stored that connection string using the methods I showed above. And then I would get something like this, which would be a JSON structure that would tell me all the information about the connection string, including the value, which is hidden here. And I could use that in my web part. So those are again, two different ways. You can use property panes, or you can use uh, tenant properties to store information that you want to use uh, in your solutions, in your web parts. And again, if you wanted to write the property, you would just use, like in this case, if I wanted to use the SPO management shell, I would just set SPO storage entity and pass the string. Well, that's pretty much it for the sample from Joao. You can find the code at the URL here. Now, of course, I don't expect you to be able to type that really quickly. If you go to aka.ms slash SPFX web parts and just look for a room chat, you'll be able to find it. If you wanna learn more about the uh, the controls that I used for the video part or the, the joy I use for the chat part, you can actually go to aka.ms slash ACS storybook. But that's it for me and back to you, Patrick. Awesome stuff as always, Hugo, thank you.